Welcome. This video covers the answer to the third question of my second global warming quiz, which is about the role of volcanoes in global warming. But before we rush to answer the third question, let's remind ourselves what it was. Question 3. True or false? The annual CO2 output from volcanic activity is less than 1% of the total human output. Some argue that the human contribution to the total amount of CO2 in the Earth's atmosphere is tiny, and so we can have little or no impact on the climate. They state that the output from volcanoes dwarf our contribution. While others say that before we started to burn substantial amounts of fossil fuels, cue the obligatory film of smokestacks please. Thank you. The amount of carbon dioxide that the Earth's oceans, land and plants naturally put out was balanced by the amount they took in. We have changed that balance. Well, let's see which of any of these claims are true. First, let's work out what the human contribution to the atmospheric carbon dioxide really is, and then compare it to the volcanic output. So the first thing we must understand is the carbon cycle, which describes the storage and movement of carbon on our planet. Carbon is stored primarily in four places. The ocean, which stores the bulk of the carbon, about 40,000 billion tonnes, in the land, about 1,600 billion tonnes. In plants and animals, about 600 billion tonnes. And in the atmosphere, about 800 billion tonnes. These are the reservoirs of carbon. Now we need to look at how it moves around from reservoir to reservoir. Each year the oceans put out about 90 billion tonnes and the land and plants put out another 110 billion tonnes. Humans put out only about 8 billion tons of carbon dioxide, primarily from burning of fossil fuels, but also changes in land use and construction. When we compare the human sources to the output from the oceans, land and plants, it amounts to a mere 4%. But if you compare it to the total carbon in the reservoirs, it's only two hundredths of 1%. Or compare it to the total atmosphere, it is two ten thousandths of a percent. Which of these is right? The human output is two ten thousandths of a percent, two hundredths of a percent, or four percent? The answer is none of them are right. When you hear figures like this, you should realize that those people are trying to play with your mind. They're forgetting that the carbon is also being deposited in those same reservoirs. Let's take that into account. The land takes in about 111 billion tons and the ocean is about 92 billion tons. So they're taking about 3 billion tons more than they put out. This is because the carbon cycle is out of balance because we add 8 billion tons to the atmosphere each year. Note there is no return path for our carbon emissions, unlike for the oceans and the land and the plants. The net effect of all this is that we add 5 billion tons of carbon in the form of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere each year. That is the number we need to compare to the volcanic output to see which is worse. Some claim that one volcano during an eruption can put out 100 times the amount of carbon dioxide that humans do in one year. I'm sure you have figured out that this must be wrong, from what we have said already. If that were true, and humans put out 8 billion tons of carbon dioxide in a year, that would mean that a single volcanic eruption would put out about 800 billion tons, or would double the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Clearly, as that does not happen, this has to be utter rot. But do we see increases in carbon dioxide after large eruptions? Well, let's take a look at that. Here is the famous Keeling curve showing the increase in carbon dioxide over the last 50 years. The oscillations are due to seasonal changes. Let's get rid of those by averaging over a year and plot on the curve the times of the three biggest volcanic eruptions that have occurred over the last 50 years. Note there are no big jumps in atmospheric carbon dioxide following them. OK, but perhaps the effect is more subtle, so we have to look at what's called the residuals. You get residuals by fitting a polynomial trend curve to the data and then plotting the deviations of that data from the smoothed trend line. So here's the result, and again you can see no particular enhancements in atmospheric carbon dioxide concentrations at or immediately after these big eruptions. The scale I chose here is about equivalent to the human input to the atmosphere. So we can say to better than 1% that human carbon dioxide is at least 100 times that of volcanoes. Measurements of volcanic CO2 output come to the same conclusion. So the answer to our question is true. Human output of carbon dioxide dwarfs volcanic output by an average of over a hundred times. 
Now let's push the point home once and for all and see how trivial volcanoes are in this story. Remember that volcano that erupted in Iceland last year? Shut down European airports for a couple of weeks? It is called... Uh, well, I can't actually pronounce the name, but I have a guest here from Iceland who can. Thank you. Carbon dioxide output from... Thank you. Was about 150,000 tons. Due to cancelled transatlantic flights, the output of carbon dioxide from the aviation industry dropped by 345,000 tons. So, thank you again, actually saved nearly 200,000 tons of carbon emissions by erupting in the way it did. So volcanic eruptions are just another in a long line of red herrings that climate deniers like to use to confuse people. With knowledge like this, you can identify the charlatans from the real scientists. And this is just one of the tests you can apply. Ask them about volcanoes and see if they lie to you. Links to my other quiz questions and the answers to those questions are listed in the description below. Just for fun I did a couple of other videos that you might enjoy. Those are also listed in the description box below. Pass your links on to friends and relations or even your relations that happen to be friends and see how well they do. Keep safe. Bye for now.